Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be going over five more laning combos that you guys can use to abuse in your pubs right now. Have you been struggling in your laning stage, really not sure what to do? Is your support not helping you? Well, actually, you kind of need them to help you for these combos, but is your support helping you? Well, these combos are gonna work perfectly for you. In this video, I have two safe lanes, right? Two different combination of safe lane combos that you can use, two off lane combos, and then one secret combo as well. And so yeah, let's hop right into it and go sub the game leap. I think they're still 50% off. It's definitely running out, I can tell you that for sure. So if you were hesitating, now's your last chance, okay? You have very little time left to click the link in the description down below so you can go get exclusive content that you're not gonna get here on YouTube. No one will get it here on YouTube. It won't exist. Gotta go sub to the game leap website. 50% off if you use code SUMMER at checkout Link in the description. Okay, all right, so the first combo of the lane is Timbersaw Lion. This lane is extremely strong, mainly for the reason that these heroes' cooldowns are really nice in the way that they overlap. Lion is also one of the most popular laning heroes in the game. In fact, I was actually very tempted to put this hero and pair it with a ton of heroes, because really what I've learned as, as of late is Lion's, like, good attack animation plus low cooldown reliable stun, which... You know, it's kind of funny how you think like most heroes have stuns, because most heroes do have stuns, but they don't have stuns in the way that Lion has a stun. Like, it's not a reliable low cooldown stun that doesn't, like, decimate the mana pool. There's just not a lot of heroes like that. For instance, if we look at the hero list, you know, other heroes that kind of have it, Venge, but it's like a third of her mana pool and bad cast range, and she has bad attack animation. So, like, that's the problem with Venge. And um, other immediate stuns, like Dragonite, uh... Other ones are just not ranged heroes. They aren't as low cooldown, low mana, high damage. The stun duration of Lion Stun is actually one of the highest in the game at level one at 1 1.4. Uh, so yeah, yeah, like and the other stuns, a lot of the other stuns like Lena and Leshrac are just straight up unreliable or low range like Ogre. <laughs> and I know I kept ranting on Lion Stun there. I just have come to realize how good of a spell this a actually is at level one as I've compared it to other heroes and continue to watch pros dominate with Lion in the laning stage with these high uh, high tempo heroes such as Tide Hunter and Elder Titan, and you know you can pair a lot of these heroes. So I'm using Timber Saw today only because I'm a big fan of this lane for the versatility that it, it provides. Reason why I say that is let's say the enemy team picks PL. Okay, you have Timber to counter that. Let's say they pick Morphling. Okay, Morphling's pretty good against Timber, right? Morphling lanes well against Timber. He buys E Blade to do some damage to Timber. He could turn into Timber to do damage to Timber with Timber's Q. Hopefully that made sense, but you get the point. Then Lion counters Morphling, and so in a lot of ways they. Kind of fix each other's weaknesses. Lion needs a frontliner. There you go, you have Timber. Lion also needs a hero to roam around and gank with him, provide that little bit of extra damage to guarantee that Finger actually secures the kill. I think Timber is really good at that as well. But now for the laning combo, take your W at Timber at level 1. Please do not take reactive. The Q is okay if they're a strength hero. Even then, eh, Timber Chain is just a better spell. Less mana. And um, it's, it's better because when you cast it, you can disengage as well at the same time. Basically, just spam your chain and spam your stun on the carry or the, or the support, and you do an obscene amount of damage. It really is that simple. Just give it a shot. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's pretty nuts. Next up on the list is a combo I actually did a full replay analysis of. Guess where? Guess where? I bet you can't guess it. Guess where, guys? On the Game Lead Dota 2 website. Wow. If you're not subbed, you gotta sub right now. Are you out of your mind? Right now. Sub right now. So the combo we have here is Elder Titan and Witch Doctor, and I watched this combo from Hellraiser's Resolution was playing the Elder Titan, and they actually took down uh, No One and Ramses. so like some really top tier players here, they took them out. And what I really liked about this combo is how Witch Doctor complements Elder Titan. Elder Titan in the laning stage lacks a few key things. The hero is not inherently tanky, it's a two armor hero to start, not good for a lot of melee heroes. I'm sure it gains armor from Astral Spirit, but that's, you know, Astral Spirit, it's a 10 second duration and a relatively long cooldown, so that's not the best. And um, Elder Titan also gets kited. He has no inherent, like, stun. He is stomp, but it's not like, it's not a stun, right? You're probably going to miss stomp if you try to use it without the stun, without a stun or a slow, or, you know, unless the hero is really slow, then, you know, maybe you'll hit him in that regard, but you get the point. Witch Doctor really covers these gaps, and what I liked about what they did in laning stage is that Witch Doctor took his heal at level 1. Yes, yeah, so Elder Titan at level 1 doesn't really do anything. That's not the time you want to be aggressive. 
That's the time when you just want to use Astral Spirit to hit a couple heroes, and then most importantly, get the denies. And when I said hit a couple heroes, I meant with the actual spirit to get the damage, not actually hit them after you get the spirit back. I'm saying you connect the spirit to the heroes, you get the plus 20 damage from each hero, and then you deny creeps, and you CS creeps, and yeah, you're going to tank some damage, because you're a low armor melee hero, right, with no range creep secure at level 1, <laughs> uh, at least no proper range creep secure, your W is okay at helping you get it, but uh, yeah, there's that. And then, once you hit level 3 on Elder Titan, which is the spike, hopefully Witch Doctor is about level 3 at that point as well, if not, he's level 2 and he still uh, then has his stun, but um, yeah, once Elder Titan hits level 3, which you want to prioritize, you should ask the, the Witch Doctor to give you solo XP as much as humanly possible, he should heal you up and then kind of just back off, contest a pull type of type of vibe, and stack the large camp for your astral, but that's what you do, and you heal ET at level 1, then Witch Doctor stuns at level 2, especially when ET is level 3, ET gets 40 damage plus uh, per hero, and all of a sudden you have this ET with really high CS because he doesn't have to, you know, uh, go back to base and avoid CS to not take too much damage because he has no innate sustain, and he doesn't have to buy regen, right, because Witch Doctor provides all of it, and so all of a sudden you get this ET with really early boots, and early wand, early bracer, maybe early phase boots, who's clubbing you down, and it did a lot this game, even though it did end up getting ganked, and it was against a Morphling, which is not a great matchup, I mean, at least for AT, uh, in the laning stage, that is, it still didn't really matter, and the thing is, in your pubs, if you do end up getting a favorable matchup against a hero like Wraith King, who you just, like, literally clap, like, Witch Doctor ET uh, against Wraith King could be really devastating, you just literally whack the guy down, and uh, yeah, give it a shot. Oh, also, last thing I forgot to note about this combo, mid-game, Elder Titan reduces armor when his hero is on top of other heroes. And Witch Doctor Ultimate is physical damage. And yes, Death Ward is reduced by armor. And that's why in the late game, it doesn't seem to do any damage. Because it doesn't. But if they're reduced, right? If they're affected by E.T.'s, um, <laughs> if they're affected by his aura and they lose 100% of their base armor, all of a sudden, Witch Doctor Ulti, if it's level 2, which is like kind of what it's going to be for most of the game, it does 135 damage consistently. That's a lot when they have no armor. Next up on the list is a very, this, okay, this is the secret combo. Now, I didn't know, I, I really didn't think I was going to give out this combo to anyone. I was very on the fence about it. I feel like maybe it's a little bit too powerful um, to the point where maybe even pros will eventually start using it. So I'm, I'm a bit on the fence, but here we go. All right, so the combo is, it's a Game Leaf sub, plus any male from the age range of 12 to 68. Or, or, you know, because we're inclusive here, or any of the 2.5% of women who watched the channel. If you guys don't have a Game Leaf sub, if you haven't combined your knowledge, your brain, with the knowledge of the Game Leap website, with the vast amount of content you can find there that's going to help you get to the next level, what are you doing? How are you going to win the laning stage without this combo? It's simply impossible. You're going to lack fundamentals that you learn over there. You're going to lack key strategies that you learn over there. More laning combos that you learn over there that you're just not going to get here on YouTube. So click the link down below and subscribe now. All right, coming in at number four is Luna and Ench. Oh, now in terms of safe lane combos, here we go. This is where, this is where we're getting into it. This lane is nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Ench does so much damage. You combine it with Lunar Blessing, especially level 2 Lunar Blessing when it gives 15 damage per hero. My god, you smack. Absolutely smack. Luna's biggest problem is she gets kited. Okay, enchant them. Okay, stomp them. Okay, Hellbear Clap smash them. And you just do a ton of damage. Really, it's that simple. At level 1, Ench can take Impetus or Enchant depending on whether or not you think your, your large camp, camp is going to get blocked. If it isn't going to get blocked because you're like, you know, regular to average MMR, take a big creep at minute 1 and send it at the offlaner and then have Luna beam them. All of a sudden, you're going to have this Luna who's level 4 when the offlaners may be level 3, and then the lane just only gets worse because the Enchantress can either take Nature's Attendance if, if Luna's getting pressured and heal her up, which is kind of rough because it costs a lot of mana, but you can do it. It's not too bad. It's definitely uh, definitely possible because Enchant costs very little to no mana. It's like 40. Or you can take Impetus, and you just if, if the lane's good, it just becomes even better because then you do pure damage on a 6 second cooldown and you destroy people. Now, why is Luna important? Really, you know, you could pick a lot of heroes with Ench. Ench is a lane dominator. I know I'm just largely hyping up Ench. The reality is this hero is a hardcore, if not one of the best, the best lane dominators in the game. Um, but why I like Luna with it is because Luna is a very nice hard carry who also has a bit of a mini stun. Yes, I could have picked Sven. Yes, I could have picked Wraith King with their mini stuns or like, you know, stuns. But Luna not only has beam on a low cooldown, which kind of works well with the low cooldown of Impetus. You also provide that Lunar Blessing that I was talking about. And that amp damage is extreme. The amount of DPS you and Ench do 
uh, when you're both basically when you're hitting for 30 plus is nuts right if you hit someone five times combined you're doing 150 damage and that really adds up extremely quickly and last but certainly not least on the laning stage combos we have what i i'm gonna call it the russian combo i feel like disruptor is like mostly played by russian teams it seems to be a very, uh, like, CIS region hero, but I like it with Terrorblade. I, I, I like this combo. Now, uh, a couple of other heroes I think are good with Terrorblade as well are, like, the generic save heroes. I think Abaddon's okay. kind of lacks a little bit of disable in the lane. I like Dazzle to some extent. It's a little bit weird, but TB has high effective HP because of his high armor, but low actual HP, so the Dazzle heal is quite convenient. And another one, a great one is Oracle. That one's good all throughout the game because TB hates, like, a lot of these, like, DOT things, like Veno spells. Uh, he hates magical damage. You get the Fates Edict for Terrorblade, just in general, right? Terrorblade dies to magical damage, gets Fates, Fates Edict, and then your ulti guarantees uh, Sunder, right? Well, you know, doesn't guarantee it, but it close to guarantees Sunder. So it's a nice combo in the mid game for the save heroes. But you might be saying, where does a uh, Disruptor come to play? He doesn't have any save. And you're right. I mean, I guess his ulti is like somewhat of a save, but not really. But what I like here is the pressure you apply at level one. What are some of the best traders at level one in Dota? Up there is Terrorblade and Disruptor. Terrorblade for Metamorphosis, or even Reflection, it's actually in a ridiculously good trading spell, you just use it off cooldown, it's quite good. And Disruptor, really nasty. Thunderstrike just does damage. Disruptor also has some of the highest attack range in the game. Coming in at 625 attack range, I think he's literally like top 5 um, in terms of attack range for heroes, and you know, that just goes to show how efficient he actually is, his damage is pretty good as well, his agi is not the best, but he does have okay movement speed at 295 and most importantly what do position 4 players usually do to avoid tanking damage from a position 5 who's consistently harassing them they go into the trees you know what spell completely ignores that it's thunderstrike because it gives vision right so when people are trying to juke a tb meta in the trees it doesn't work and then you combine that with a glimpse back into the tb meta or a kinetic field more commonly typically people take kinetic field at two which is a 2.6 second disable right uh, which is good, right? Because manning up against TB doesn't really work in the early game. And so I love this, right? Disruptor really secures TB a good laning stage. You just have to buy a couple mangoes and a couple clarities. And keep in mind, Thunderstrike, for everyone who doesn't know this, is a 180 damage spell at level 1. You heard that correct. It is 180 damage on an 18 second cooldown. It is one of the highest damage nukes in the game. On top of that, every time it procs, it slows the enemy by 100% movement speed for 0.1 seconds and attack speed, which actually matters. It actually matters. So I really do believe Disruptor is underrated as a hero in general. I think Thunderstrike is one of the most underrated spells in the game in terms of level 1 trading, uh, especially by pub players, not necessarily by pros. But, you know, that, that's all I have to say. I think these two heroes combine at their level 1 prowess and level 2 prowess. Sometimes TB will, you know, pop meta level 2. If his laning stage is easy, then you pop off that. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and go get your game lips up now. I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.